Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, brothers and sisters. This is uh, me, Fatma Al Jawi, uh, straight from the topic Palestinians and October 7th Hibni healing. I'm sorry to tell you that, but it is what it is. Uh, I'm writing everything down and I'm reading from a screen as it keeps me articulate and help me not to lose my points. Okay, let's start. So I have been planning to start the show at the beginning of uh, 2024. It's been it's been there forever, but Allah, because everything has been happening in Palestine, I don't think I can keep I can keep things inside me anymore. I feel day by day I'm going to explode seriously. So uh, this episode is way out of my comfort zone, as it puts me in a vulnerable uh, position out here in public that everyone hates. But I consider this vulnerability is nothing when it comes to whatever the Palestinians have been going through since 1948. I haven't been feeling okay since uh, the genocide on Gaza started and I cannot see to get myself distracted, although I have too much to be done since. I moved out to another city and you know how it is. Uh, I honestly have been crying every single day, watching and scrolling down the media platforms. And for me, it feels like my whole life is on a pause since the genocide, literally. There is a, a deep mix inside me of sadness, helplessness, anger and agony in regards to the whole situation, of course. When I was a kid in school, they taught us this saying or hadith by Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. The believers in their mutual kindness, compassion and sympathy are just like one body. When one of the limbs suffers, the whole body responds to it with wakefulness and fever. I never was able to feel the meaning of this hadith until now. Since October 7th, my whole body has been aching. I could not sleep for multiple nights and still. I am in a constant constipation and diarrhea situation due to the amount of stress I'm feeling in regards to our brothers, sisters, and kids in Gaza. Sometimes watching and knowing that I'm helpless makes it worse. It makes me feel suffocated. Me reading, watching, or listening what has been done to Palestine and Palestinians by the Zionists makes me in deeper denial. I cannot even fathom the idea of how we as Muslims were too numb to, to the point these Zionists got capable of all of their crimes and atrocity against Palestinians, against the land and the people. There is too much to be said about this subject in exact that I will be uploading about soon. If you know me, 2023 was the most difficult year ever for me as it started with the sudden loss of my father, the 3rd of January. And this loss affected me as a girl so bad that it made me feel like I lost my backbone, literally. I sobbed a lot this year and I have been questioning God a lot as being a bad Muslim who is not yet taking God's destiny and decision about losing my father. All what I cared about is that I could not get enough of him as I only cared about myself at that time. Now, after watching those teeny tiny Palestinian kids, babies and neonates whose families were killed during the genocide and they never ever were able to get the right amount of their pa parents to even begin with, it made me feel like what Alhamdulillah means. Just now, it made me feel thankful of my loss. Those cases who I should worry about, not myself. And also, if you know me, this is not the best time for me in general. I have been crossing to a transition state that seems to take forever. This is my 14th time moving out since 2012. I have been wondering, complaining and questioning God about it as usual, but I have never ever remembered to be thankful for having a roof over my head every single time I moved out until I witnessed Palestinians. Their entire neighborhood gets bombed over their heads and they have kept rebuilding since 1948. People are picking up their belongings from under the rubbles and they are still thankful. They still say Alhamdulillah, while me complaining about the boxes backing and unpacking. I remember three years ago, I fallen into the uh, inner child and childhood trauma bullshit. I bought into being a traumatized kid and kept seeking a way to heal my inner child. And those Palestinian kids made me so ashamed of myself. They shocked me. The level of faith their hearts are holding. If I had a trauma, what would these kids have after all what they went through out the genocide? 
I'm asking those coaches who kept lecturing us about our inner child and healing journeys. How about we call for a ceasefire and save the rest of the Palestinian children now and as soon as possible and start holding ourselves accountable instead of not doing enough toward the children of Palestine at least. Who of those coaches would dedicate themselves to children of Palestine and their traumas, PTSD, and whatever disorder the occupation caused them? How about asking and mandating for Israel to leave the Palestinian land so we prevent those traumas to happen from the beginning in the future? Two months ago, I remember I had to choose over a $1 latte instead of $4 lattes because I did not have the luxury of having enough money. Not, I did not have any money to begin with, the luxury. I was missing the luxury. I remember feeling so poor and kept complaining to God about it and blaming whomever got me there. I was crying over a latte that I could not afford. Not water, not food, nothing essential, of course. The latte I got was good and refreshing, but I don't remember saying Alhamdulillah. While the Palestinian would be under the rebels for days without a single drop of water. Those scenes made me feel silly, despicable, and trivial for real. Now I keep asking myself if I remember being thankful or not. Or when I am in a bad situation, I ask myself what would a Palestinian kid say or act when they are stressed. I thought being a Muslim born and raised in the holy city in the heart of the Islamic nation was enough for me. I thought I was strongly and faithfully armed. Suddenly, and after October 7th, I found out that we are missing a lot. We are missing the mental and spiritual stamina. We are missing the faith of Palestinians on top of whatever we called faith that we thought we had. As a Muslim, I felt like I am in an urgent need to renew my faith with Allah. I wonder if the Palestinians have different Islamic schools or curricula, but I was sure that I am missing a lot within the Islamic school. I feel really sorry for directing this episode about me and myself and my situation, but I'm pretty sure that so many of you could have benefited. If you benefited out of this content, I do want to make a content that it's for you only to watch. I want to make sure that this content is shareable with whomever you think that they need to hear it. I hate Thank to leave you astray. And for those who bear with me to the end of it, I would love to share my triple A with you. Here is my applicable, actionable advice for you. All you have to do is ask, answer, acknowledge, and act upon. So starting with the first question. Write this down, please. How October 7th changed you? Second question. What values you gained and what values you ditched after or since October 7th? Question number three. How could you contribute helping people in Palestine? Please let me know because I really feel that I'm not doing enough for those people. I would, I would love, love to hear your answer, so please comment down below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, support if you feel this content deserves to be continued. Help this content to be in others' home and feed suggestions, please. See you again. Bye.